Hi guys and welcome back. Um, today I've been, I want to introduce uh, to you something I've been thinking about doing. It's an introductory to each one of my videos because, well, some people may not have watched before. So I'm going to just kind of introduction, do an introduction at the beginning of every one of my videos. So I've come up with uh, telling my name and uh, what I do on my channel and things like that. And I will play that before um, I actually do my backstory pre-recorded clip. So let's go ahead and do the uh, introduction. Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Kimberly Blackstone and on my channel I'm going to be doing crafts and showing you how to do a craft while I tell you either a true crime or a mystery story. Um, and I research every one of the facts um, everything about the stories before I tell them to you so I hope you guys enjoy my channel um, and if you do just make sure you like and subscribe and we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into today's story hi guys welcome back um, first of all I want to say I'm sorry about the hair I just had a shower, so it's still wet, so it looks kind of bad. But, um, I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to start, um, start off by telling a little bit of my backstory of why I'm even doing this channel. Um, first of all, I'm doing this channel because doing the research on the crimes and doing the videos keeps my mind busy. And there's a very specific reason as to why um, I have to keep my mind busy. Um, another reason why I'm doing this video is because, uh, the videos and the channel is because I'm hoping that one day um, I can make a little bit of money off of it and um, also just bring some awareness um, about a specific thing. And this has to do with my backstory. I want to um, make a little bit of money of it because on it because, well, I'll explain that in a minute. Well, so my backstory. Um, first of all, I'm a mother to six kids, four girls and two boys. Um, I only have five living kids left because on December the 28th of 2020, which wasn't very long ago, my son committed suicide. And it's because, and he did it by shooting himself in the head. And I'm the one that found him. So, um, the main reason I'm telling you guys this is because in some of the Sorry. Some of the videos that I do, it mentions suicide and I make it emotional. If, or if I, things to do with guns, I get emotional sometimes. So I just wanted to explain why in case I ever do do that. Now the reason I want to make money off of this is because I want to start a foundation in my son's name. That will help families. Everybody thinks about the expense of the funeral, but what they don't think about is maybe the cleanup after something like that. You have to pay to have it cleaned. Um, and they don't think about the fact that sometimes family just needs to take time off work. And they still have to pay bills, so sometimes they don't get that luxury, luxury uh, or that need met to be able to take time off work. So, I'm hoping that one day these videos may do some good and I may be able to start that to help families in this situation. So, that's my story, guys. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I need to do this. And that's why sometimes I may get emotional in the videos. Just if anybody's out there that's watching, that's having thoughts of suicide, it's not worth it. The pain don't go away. It just goes to the family members. It just passes on, so it don't go away. Just go get help. Because it's out there.
Okay, guys, so today's story is going to be about the toy box killers. If you remember in the last video, I, I, uh, rec I covered the toolbox killers. Now, I didn't know anything about the toy box killer until I started researching the toolbox killers, and it kept coming up. So, I kind of just started reading about it, and I thought it was a good story to cover, um, when you think about toys, you think about kids, so you think about the, the, the story is going to be about kids, but it's not. Um, and today's story does have a disclaimer, like normal, there's going to be sexual content, uh, very descriptive, graphic details um, about torturing, um, it's just, it's a really heavy story, um, so viewer discretion is definitely advised, and no kiddos is to watch this one. This one's, this one's pretty bad. Uh, so, like I said, viewer discretion is advised. Now, let's go ahead and just jump in there, throw in my backstory clip, and then we'll get started on the craft and the story. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. So, everything that I'm using for this craft, I did get at uh, Dollar Tree. So, it's a, another very easy, inexpensive craft to make. And I'm just kind of dusting the foam off of this plate. So, but today's story is about the toy box killer, David Ray Parker. Now, he has some accomplices to help him. Um, but first, we're going to talk about David. So, David... He was born November 6th of 1939 in Bellin, New Mexico, and his parents was Cecil and Nettie um, Parker. Now, they, his dad, Cecil, was a drunkard, and he would, when he was drinking, he would get really mean and just kind of lash out at the whole family, um, and because of him being a drunkard, uh, and his mom, you know, was kind of had her own habits. You know, they were struggling financially. Now, because of the financial struggle and the fact that, you know, the mom really just didn't want the kids. Because David had a sister named Peggy. Um, they, David and Peggy actually went to live with their grandfather. Now, their grandfather was a very strict guy. And if you didn't follow the rules, well, you were going to get punished. And his punishments was not the way it, a kid should get punished. He just kind of went over the top with his punishments, was mean himself. So they had, you know, a very rough life, a very rough way to go. David and um, his sister Peggy did. Now, growing up and in school, uh, you know, most kids has it rough at home. They, uh, they get to escape that, you know, at school. Well, not David. David actually got made fun of. He, uh, kids would just be mean to him and make fun of him. And he just had a rough life at school, too. So, it didn't matter where David went. David was going to have a rough way to go. Um kind of sad that you know he had to go through that but it's no excuse I'm not making excuses as to why he did the things that he did um, that we're going to talk about today so David uh, he suffered a lot of you know a lot so David's mother and Peggy's mother never actually um had anything to do with the kids once they moved in with their grandparents but his father would come visit now when his father came visited he would give David uh, pornos that contained BDSM like magazines and videos and that kind of thing and then David's sexual fantasies of rape, raping torturing and even murdering uh, women developed in his teenage years now, David went on to, he went to Mountaineer High School in Mountaineer, New Mexico. And while he was, you know, he was in school, like I said, he did get bullied a lot and got mistreated and things like that. 
Um, and then after he got out of high school, he got, he enlisted in the United States Army. Now, once he enlisted in the United States Army, um, he was in there and he served and, and he did get honorably discharged from the Army. I'm going to show you this bow. I pre-made this bow before uh, we started the video because these kind of take a while to make sometimes. So, I wanted to just kind of go ahead and pre-make that bow. And everything I'm, uh, how I'm gluing all this together is just with a hot glue gun. Just gluing it on there with a hot glue gun. Okay, so he did get the honorably discharged. Now, David did go on to be married four different times. And all four times ended in divorce. But he did end up having uh, two daughters out of his marriages. Now, the one daughter, I couldn't find anything about her name. It seems like, you know, she just kept her name hush-hush quiet. She didn't want nothing to do with her dad. She didn't want to be associated with him in any way. So, I don't, I can't really tell you his daughter's names except for the one. And the one daughter, um, she went by Jessie, Jessie Ray. And we'll be mentioning her again later in the story. Um, actually, later in the story, she uh, kind of becomes kind of like his partner in crime in the story. I'm just going to hold that there for a second. I got glue on my finger. Now, to let that dry. Okay. Now, David, like I said, he was married four times, and it did end in divorce. Um, and once that, you know, he got divorced and everything, he started trying to meet him a girlfriend, and he ended up meeting a girl named Cindy. Now, him and Cindy would become very close. They would start dating. And then they would be the ones that would... Uh, commit crimes together. So they stayed together for a long time until they got caught and doing the crimes that they did. Now, um, they went out, they talked about things, you know, they got close and I guess they decided to commit these crimes together. So what they did is they went out and they got themselves a truck trailer. Now this truck trailer, what they did was they um, took porno magazines and they took the pages out, mostly the pages with the BDSM on them, and they lined this trailer's walls with uh, these pages from these pornos, and that would have become their wallpaper for the walls. Now, they also hung a sign uh, that said something like Satan's Den and different things that has to do with Satan. So, they were kind of like into Satan and that kind of thing, Satanism and stuff. Now, they also put in this trailer uh, different sex toys and different things of that nature and... Um, Actually, David uh, was a mechanic. He, he was very mechanical, so he was very, um, very good at making things. And he actually made some uh, of his own creations, his own sex toys. And they were definitely not made for pleasure. I'm just going to add that in there. Um, so these sex toys, um, one of them, for example, there was a dildo that David made out of just pipes, pipes like that you would buy from like Lowe's and he added nails like around the base of it and then further up uh, that pointed out. So as you can imagine this uh, that was definitely not for pleasure. Um, 
and I'm just kind of, I'll just show you, I'm just kind of fluffing that bow out because I kind of smashed it when I glued it on there. That way, and it don't, to me, it just don't feel very sturdy, but hopefully once that glue uh, dries better, it'll be, it'll stay on there a little better. If not, later on, I'll go in there and just shoot a little bit more glue on there and let it dry. But that's how I got the bow on there. All right, so um, another thing that they, they had like whips and chains, they had saws and different knives and just different, uh, an electroshock machine. Um, so this trailer was just, it was not made uh, for pleasure at all. It truly wasn't. Um, now I have different flowers. I'm just gonna kinda cut and put in the styrofoam. Just gonna kinda decorate it. Okay, so they would, you know, they would capture these women and they would take them uh, to the, what they called the toy box and they would just keep these um, women there for months at a time. Uh, and one other thing I did want to mention that David actually, uh, he actually recorded a tape. Now on this tape, he uh, recorded, he would play it for these girls. And he would say this was to kind of brainwash it or wash them so that they didn't give them no problems, they, that they listened. Um, and there was just no problem for them. Now, on this tape, one thing he would say to them was, uh, it started off like saying, hi, bitch. Uh, and then he would go on to describe what they were gonna do to them. The things that he would do and about how there wasn't nothing that could, they could do about it and that sort of thing um it was just awful the things that they did they would uh cut them they would even get like dogs and other people involved in on it they, they would just rape them and torture them and sometimes they'd kill them and then sometimes they'd just let them go um But when they let them go, they'd make sure they were just drugged so much that uh, they didn't remember anything. They didn't know what had happened to them. They couldn't remember. Okay, so on March 22nd of 1999, this is how that they, um, they actually got caught. So March 22nd of 1999, um, in Elephant Butte, New Mexico, David actually posed as an undercover police officer, and he approached a woman and told her she was under arrest for um, solicitation of prostitution. Now, he handcuffed her, and he took her back to the trailer. Now, once he was back in the trailer uh, with this woman, he... Um, you know, he tortured her and everything for two days and held her captive for two days. And then he actually slashed her throat. He slashed her throat and then set her free. Now, this woman um, had been fighting with her husband that day. And what had happened was... Um, he... She went out and was going to, you know, play pool with her friends or whatever. And then um, Jessie, which was David's daughter, remember her, knew her as well. So what she done was she took her out to a bar. And once she took her out to this bar, she... Um, told Jesse she got her drinks and stuff like that of that nature 
And then after she got her the drinks and they were getting ready to leave when they in, was in the parking lot, they, uh, she hit her in the head and knocked her out. So then David came and got her and took her to the trailer. And then he tortured her and then he slashed her throat and he dumped her on the side of the road. Now somebody, cause he thought she was dead. So somebody found her and took her, you know, got her help, got her um, all healed up and things like that. Now she went back home and once she went back home, the police and her husband did not believe her. They just didn't believe that this truly happened to her. They thought she was lying. Her husband thought she was out cheating, that kind of thing. And uh, he divorced her. Now, even though the police didn't truly believe her, um, and they told her husband that and she ended up getting divorced, they actually, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting two of these mixed up. I'm so sorry. Give me just a second. No, I'm sorry. I'm getting two victims messed up. And that's what I get for trying to pay more attention to this craft. So, anyway, sin, this, this woman... Let's just start over, okay? So, he posed as a police officer. And he took this woman back and he tortured her and he thought that... Um, they, he tortured her. Now, with this victim, and I'm so sorry again, I'm so sorry. Um, he tortured her. And then, um, he left. Well, when he left, what happened was, Cindy, which is his accomplice, actually, uh, went in the room like she left the keys on the um she left the keys on a stand beside where the, the cindy was or this girl was tied up to and then she went into the other room to make a phone call well when she went in this other room to make the phone call then this woman um seen the opportunity to get free so once she got free or once that she was in there on the phone call this woman took the keys and she started getting loose well cindy heard her and when cindy heard her she decided or she came in and then she tried to she hit this woman over the head with a lamp well when she hit this woman over the head with the lamp she was hoping it knock her out but it didn't so she fought her, Sandy, and she got loose. Well, she ran down the street. She was naked. She had like a dog collar around her neck. She ran down the street. And when she ran down the street from this woman, um, she kept knocking on doors. You know, cars was just kind of passing by her. And nobody would stop and help this poor girl. So, this poor girl finally got somebody to open the door. Well, once she opened the door, you know, they took her in, they comforted her, they uh, called the police, the police come out, and this is how they got caught. And I'm so sorry, like I said, that I got these two victims mixed up, but that's what happened. So, that's why I always look at my notes, because if not, I do that. So... The police questioned the girl. The girl told her, told them where it was. So this is what led them to start investigating the um, the toy box. So they go in and they investigate the toy box. Hey, enough! They go and they start investigating, and you know. David and Cindy was arrested. Now, once they got into the toy box, they find this list that David had made. And this list 
um, what it was, was it didn't have any of the victims' names. All it had on there was the date that they were brought into the toy box and how many times they was assaulted. So that's one thing that they found. Uh, they also found a Polaroid pictures of the victims. They found um, video recordings of them torturing the victims. So one recording um, that they found of one woman, she had this very distinctive tattoo. Now this distinctive is tattoo was so unusual that there was only one of these tattoos ever done and they actually was able to identify them because of this they was actually able to identify this uh this woman because of this tattoo so this is actually where the victim that i was talking about and what had happened was with this victim it's the one that went out drinking with her friends and uh, Jesse, David's daughter, took, okay? Um, but this victim was there. So what happened was um, she actually got her throat slit. She went and got treated, and she's the one that went home, and nobody believed her. Now, she got divorced, and she moved to Colorado. Okay? So... They um, identified this woman... And they brought her in, and they, you know, asked her about it, and she still didn't remember what had happened or nothing like that. Well, they showed her the video, and when they showed her the video, then she remembered everything. And the whole time all this is going on, they are releasing stuff to the media, letting people know, you know. And another victim come forward. So this is three victims that they have that's alive now. But this other victim come forward, and with this victim, she said she had reported it, but the police didn't do anything. They, they blew her off, they didn't go and investigate or anything like that, because they said that, you know, they thought, well, this... This woman is a known prostitute. She's a drug addict. We think she's just imagining this. So they never did anything about it. So they ended up sending out a hundred investigators to the toy box. And they investigate and they find all this evidence of this. Now they never did find human remains or anything of that nature. But they found all this other evidence. So they was actually able to convict me. So what they done. I'm going to trim this down just a little more. Make it not as long. So they, you know, they collected all the evidence and stuff like that. And they actually found out that there were two other uh, people, accomplices involved. One of them being, um, Jesse, which was, you know, Ray's daughter, or David's daughter. And then another one was Dennis Yancey. Okay, now what they found, they found on one of the videos, it was actually Dennis's girlfriend, um, and what they did, what he did was he actually strangled this one, his girlfriend to death on a video and helped torture her. So, I'm just checking my notes because I don't want to mess up again. So what they ended up doing is David was tried on three separate trials, one for each one of those uh, women that they had that could testify against him. Now, on the first trial, um, he was, it was a mistrial and they had to retrial 
but he ended up getting charged with uh, 12 counts and sentenced with 12 counts. Now, the second trial, uh, the witness died before they could actually go to trial, so there was no conviction there. But then, on at the third trial in 2001, David actually took a plea, plea bargain of 224 years in prison for all of the charges against him from all of the trials. So, he took that plea bargain. Now... Jesse, David's daughter, she was sentenced to two and a half years in prison, and then once she got out, she would have five years of probation. So that's what she ended up getting out of it. And then in 1999, Dennis, the other accomplice, the one that strangled his girlfriend, he was convicted to, of strangulation murder, and then in, 2000 and, in 2010, um, David was released out on parole because he got convicted with 36 years. Now, he got released out on parole, but they had to hold it up because he didn't have anywhere to stay, so he didn't get released until 2011. Then in 2011, he was out for three months, and he got arrested again for parole violations. Now, he would end up spending the rest of his time um, in prison for this. For the rest of his sentence, because of getting, you know, put out on parole violation. Or getting arrested again for parole violation. So he was actually due out for parole, or his sentence was up this year. He was due to get out this year. I'm not sure it didn't say the exact when he's exactly is supposed to get out or anything of that nature, but he is supposed to get out this year sometime. Then in 2000, Cindy was sentenced to 36 years in prison for her involvement in the crimes. Then on July 15th of 2009, Cindy was released. Now on May the 28th of 2002, David, at the age of 62, did die of a heart attack. So David did die. Um, it, I'm not sure as to um, about where Cindy is right now or anything of that nature. Um, so I'm not real sure where she ended up at or anything like that. And then David, or Dennis, not real sure about him, where he's at. I don't know if he's still in prison. It didn't really say. I couldn't really find any updates on him. So I'm not real sure on that. Um, but like I said, he did die, um, David did, in prison. So what, let me know what you guys think about all that. I mean, I just think that it's crazy that the way they did torture them women and stuff and that, I mean, they used electroshock and, uh, different torturing methods on them, cut them and different things. As you can see, I'm just kind of going around it and decorating it. I think this can turn out really cute. I really like it. think about these stories let me know about how I tell them just let me know your guys opinion about all this I can't improve and get better at my videos if I don't have opinions I 
always love to hear from you guys. Almost done with this, guys, and then I'll let you in the show. So I was thinking about some more. I'm trying to figure out some more stories to do. I think next time I'm going to kind of try to do like a mystery type story because I haven't done one of those yet. I need to really get me some wire cutters and different things to do my crafts with. I think this one's going to have to be cut just a little bit more. Or my glitter in the floor, I mean my scissors on the floor. So pretty much all you do to make this is you just keep going around, put placing the flowers in a bit now. Just keep placing the flowers in to fill that in to where you can't see that foam that you use to place the candle on there, the candle holder on there. Keep filling it in. That's all you do. Just keep shoving the flowers and the pretty little decorations and that kind of thing in there. Just to fill that in and decorate it. And that's all you do. See, I haven't done this side yet. 
but you can see what I'm doing. And I'll actually, once it is finished, I'll take uh, pictures of it and put at the end of the video. That way you guys can see the finishing look. And you just put your little candle down in there. And it's a cute little centerpiece candle holder for where your table. Cute little one for fall. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. You guys be safe. Be careful who you get involved with because there's a lot of crazy people out there in this world. Be careful who you trust. And I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've been enjoying the crafts and things that I've been doing. And like I said, I will add a finished picture of the finished product. It's just I don't want to hold you guys up anymore because I figure you're probably getting pretty bored with seeing me do the same thing and me not talking and again I'm sorry about getting mixed up in our story earlier I hope you guys made sense of it and understood what actually happened it's just I got so wrapped up in doing the craft and it made me get mixed up in the story so again I'm sorry about that guys and I hope you enjoy watching even though I did mess it up this time and I Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, guys.